Well, welcome back, everyone, to our daily devotions. Uh, always a joy to be with you. We've titled uh, today's message, We Have a Dual Citizenship, as the Scripture tells us. You know, you may have heard the saying, don't be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. Now, at first glance, uh, that might appear to be a contradiction of terms, because aren't we told in Colossians chapter three to set our minds on things above and not on the things here on the earth? And certainly we are directed uh, to have a heavenly perspective, but that doesn't mean we should forget about, forget about our purpose here on earth as God has for us. See, God has assigned each believer to be his ambassador, to be his representative of, of his grace, of his mercy, of his peace. And certainly in a, in a lost and dying world, that becomes uh, front and center for the believer. Second Corinthians 5.20 says, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. See, what we see in Scripture is a dual citizenship, that we're to understand that we have a home in heaven because of the finished work of Christ on the cross, but we also have a specific purpose that God is looking to use you and I during our time here on earth. And so we're here for a season, and God um, has serving and sharing for us to do. Now, Philippians 3.20 says it this way, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly notice a way to Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And this kind of understanding ties to Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, where his encouragement to them was, you know, some of the believers there thought they missed a rapture. Uh, some of the believers were concerned about how it was all going to work out. Um, some believers were even concerned about the tribulation. And Paul makes very clear about the, the rapture and really the understanding of, hey, just live for Christ and just leave it in his hands. And when things unfold, they will. Nobody knows the time. And so it's, again, that understanding of, you know, when heaven, when the time for heaven uh, comes, it will kick in all the blessings that God has promised to us. But until then, uh, we're not to prop our feet up and just wait for that to happen. We're to keep our hands to the plow and we're to be useful while we're here. And again, I, I think of that with those two words we mentioned earlier, serving and sharing. We want to serve in the body of Christ, the church, which assumes something. You need to be connected to a church. You know, week after week, as I'm here at the church, I, I look and see who's here, and it's always a joy to see people come. But I also can't help but to think about some people that aren't here, that are missing out. And, and, and I'm not thinking about people necessarily who go to other churches. That's their business. But people who just aren't connected at all. And that somewhat uh, has always, uh, you know, kind of bothered me because I want to see people plugged in spiritually, whether it's at our church or any church. And so I encourage you, I implore you, um, to go to your church, whatever church that is, you want to be connected because you know you need to be serving. That's a way that you maximize and fulfill your responsibility of having a dual citizenship. The other side of that is the sharing. God wants you to be sharing the hope that you have within you. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen every day, um, and you certainly don't want to force that. You want that to be entirely spirit-led. That's always the best way to do it. Anytime we try to kind of manipulate opportunities to share our faith, and people do do that, um, it never turns out right because the spirit's not leading the conversation. But God will put people and he'll put situations right in front of you that you can't help but to share your faith and to be that ambassador, that representative that God has for you. Because again, we have a dual citizenship. And although we have a home in heaven, God does have us here. He has you at the house that you live in, the address where you get your mail for a reason, for a purpose. He has you in the church that you're in. He has you at the job that you have. All of these things, you know, we, we talk about God's sovereignty. We talk about God's will, but we don't always, we always live like we have that conviction in our heart. And if we do have that conviction, we're saying, God, nothing is on accident. You have me here for a reason. You know, sometimes we, we wonder, you know, why am I still living here? Or why am I still in this job? Or why hasn't this happened? I think everybody goes through those situations and that cycle of, of guessing and maybe even sometimes second guessing ourselves or even God. 
But again, realize that God is purposeful in our placement. And we got to look at life that way. I think when we do, there'll definitely be a certain amount of peace that we get out of uh, just that perspective. Um, but certainly uh, there will be that sense of purpose as well. Um, and so we need to have this knowledge uh, that our status both here and in heaven um, is something of a healthy motivation for you and I. What I mean by that is, is that the motivation to serve and to share comes from the conviction that we have that God knows what he's doing in, the, in our time here on earth, but also that we have a home in heaven. That is a healthy motivation to do what we do. Remember years ago, um, somebody who was a little bit older than me in the faith and uh, somebody who, has, uh, who had served God for a while, um, he would always ask us that question, why do we do what we do? That's a very healthy question to ask yourself as a believer. You know, sometimes people think they're doing it out of obligation. Sometimes people think they're just, I'm just doing it just so I can, you know, just stay, can I stay somewhat connected. You know, those are all maintenance mentality type answers. We do what we do because Christ has done for us. We do what we do maybe for people because we know they need help. These are the ways that we need to be thinking. And we do all of this in light of the fact that God is watching how we manage ourselves here and how we do here determines what we do there. Not if we get into heaven. That's usually what people get caught up on. Well, I got to do good here so I can get into heaven. No, that's been taken care of with Christ. And hopefully you have that understanding. Really, the business of how you and I act here with our citizenship determines our level of responsibility and glory. And so this dual citizenship factor here is something of the utmost importance, both, both for now and to come. And so we should look at this to be something that is front and center, especially in our climate right now, politically speaking. You know, instead of getting caught up in, you know, fruitless conversations or arguments, I should say, about politics and views, um, instead of... Uh, getting uh, dragged into conspiracy theory talk, you know, getting into the fray of all of that. We need to be people who are standing on the convictions of the Holy Scriptures and communicating that with people when given the opportunity. And so perhaps more so than ever before, given the, the, you know, the transactions of this past year, people are looking for answers. People need to, to know where hope is to be, where hope is found. People need to know the, you know, the source of, of comfort, of peace. These are things that people are wrestling with at night and sometimes keep them up at night. And so our commitment to Christ can potentially light the spark that does lead to a revival. And I'm not talking about a, like a worldwide revival. Uh, that would take a little bit more than me or you. Um, but perhaps a revival in our own home, a revival in, in our own circle of friends, our own circle of influence, and hopefully a revival in us, because that's where it actually has to ultimately begin in our own heart. Um, and that's kind of where the aim needs to be. And I think when we have that dual citizenship mentality, that's possible. And so let us concentrate our efforts then on prayer, participation, and without question, as that participation includes serving the least of these, and of course, pursuing God through the avenues of our religious liberties that have been afforded to us here in America. You know, I often wonder when I stand before God, I can only speak for me, I wonder if God's going to ask me, well, what did you do with the time that I gave you? And I'm not talking about necessarily, you know, seven, I lived 78 years or 98 years or 108 years. I'm not necessarily talking about duration. I'm talking about location. You know, I could have been born anywhere in the world and in, in any generation, just like you, but God chose for me to be born here in, in nice, beautiful America with the freedoms I have. And I often wonder when I get before God, if he's going to ask me about how I use my location to serve him in terms of the freedoms I have. Uh, there's so many people around the world who are ministering, who are congregating um, in churches that are meeting behind closed doors because it could mean their freedom and maybe even their life. And so we have such a blessing here. We should be coming to church week after week with a smile on our face, even if things are difficult around us, just for the sheer fact that we get to be in the house of the Lord. Uh, we should also take great joy in with the opportunities we have to serve and to share our faith here. 
And I'm not sure our religious liberties are going to last forever and ever here. I don't think that's God's will. I think things are going to get very hard and difficult at some point. But until they do, let us make good on what God has given to us. This dual citizenship has, without question, a a meaning in our life. And let us use it uh, to the best of our abilities to honor God and to help others. May God bless you.